As expected, Nigeria's inflation rate accelerated to a new 17-year high of 21.09% in October and 0.32 percent points increase from 20 0.77 percent recorded in september raising concerns for nigerians already battling with the weak household incomes and import pass through costs already there are concerns that the country's inflation trend may not have reached its peak considering the triggers like you know intermittent fuel scarcity witnessed during the review period stubbornly high gas and energy prices lingering currency pressures and of course a build-up of higher naira liquidity as the campaign season starts and these are all the things that are yet to be addressed. According to the latest Consumer Price Index uh, reports released by the National Bureau of Statistics yesterday, flawed uh, food inflation, I beg your pardon, also surged to 23.72% in the review month, which is 0.38% higher than the 23.34% rates that was recorded in the previous month and 5.38% higher compared to what we had, uh, which was 18.34% in October of 2021. Now, indeed, higher inflation and exchange rate volatility are associated with higher pass uh, through of exchange rates into import prices, uh, lingering currency pressure, etc., etc. And these are a couple of the issues that we're going to be addressing this evening. Well, well, joining us to discuss this and break it down so that we can make sense of it all is um, Gospel Obele. He's the chief economist at Street Onomix Limited. Thank you so much, Gospel. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much, Mary, and really great to be here. Good yes, to anytime to I see these numbers, my head just starts catching fire. So I'm just going to let you do the numbers thing, and I'll just ask the questions. How about that? <laughs> oh, great, great, great. <laughs> okay, but then um, it might not be funny for those who have to deal with the you know, inflation in the country. Salaries are not being increased. Um, prices of everything is going up. Sometimes, some for some, it has not just doubled, it has tripled. And the average Nigerian is trying to make sense of it all. At some point, the dollar was almost edging towards 900 Naira. Uh, but thank goodness, I think it's come down to about 600 plus. Um, but break it down for us. Why is, it, why is it still in the up and up? Most would say that, oh, it's the Ukrainian war, but then we're not in Europe, we're in Africa. COVID has come and gone. We're still trying to get back on our feet. But what could be solely responsible for how skyrocketing the prices of things are going? And of course, gas. Yes, um, thank you so much. Really great to be here again. Um, it's pretty much a very interesting conversation. And um, to a very large extent, I would be very much surprised if the average Nigerian is not really su is, is, is surprised at the, at the growth in inflation numbers. And what we see actually are the clear uh, um, effects or results of how vulnerable uh, economics economies rather you know interact with global changes and local shock shocks as it were. Uh, yes, the Russian Ukraine war is still on at a different level now. Yeah, but you can also you cannot also take out the lingering effect of that war on commodity prices. You know, most of the products like grain, sunflower oil, and the rest. Are produced from those regions, you know, in context, number one. Then number two, you also have the climate change economics, which means that with climate change also comes some form of change in raw material production and supply. So soya bean is now very much, is, you know, in the high scarcity right now. And you know, just to bring it home a bit, you've seen how the recent flood in Nigeria has also, you know, brought up a lot of questions and scare. In fact, there's been, there's been a projection by the Food and Cultural Organization that the flood crisis may likely lead to a new new um, um, event of food crisis. And that may likely also lead to some increased 17 to 23 million Nigerians, you know, caught in poverty, as the case may be. And that's how inflation really works, you know. Once prices of goods and services begin to increase, especially prices of basic necessities like food, energy, transport, housing, and all that, it means that the average individual will have to pay more to get a life, the cost of living would increase over time. And when the cost of living increased over time, it means that the block of your income you have available for expenses will keep shrinking. Hmm. And that would technically also mean that people would not be able to satisfy their needs or meet their needs at the level of satisfaction they may desire over a period of time. As a result, tougher choices will kick in and, and um, for the for the really lower of the for the lower block of income earners, you know, some form of poverty trap. Would also kick it. So we've seen a lot of this conversation as little as forecasting blackouts 
and you know a worsening situation of the naira we've seen all of those dynamics permeate into core basic necessity items for the average nigerian and that's where the pressure is and that's where the pain points are hmm. Countries like the United Kingdom, I mean, one of the reasons why Liz Truss was booted out of office was because her short-term plan for to, to cushion the effects of inflation was not realistic and, and they didn't think it was great. So, I mean, one of the reasons why she was booted out and then they brought back the, uh, the, uh, the President Rishi um, Sunak is because they thought that his ideas were better. In Nigeria's case, um, what are the cushioning effects that our government um, have come up with or are think, think, tinkering on because of course I'm sure that we have an economic council which the vice president sits on um, we have a minister of, eco uh, of, of um, finance we have I don't know if she still coordinates the economy and all of that um, but what is it that we can actually say would be a cushioning effect strategy of sorts that we can come up with that will help the situation being that our mainstay which is oil is being stolen every single day you all we all were here when they found a sudden vessel that leads all the way to the sea and then it was destroyed no questions asked no investigation so what is it that nigerians can hold on to as as a glimmer of hope you know while we go through what we're going through yeah thank, thank you so much Mary, for, the, for, for that great question yeah there are um, major low-hanging fruits that can be leveraged you know as some form of cushioning effect but however those are still they still serve as potential or they still exist in a potential form and you know the ability to unlock that potential into mainstream mechanisms through which inflation can be you know reduced or the cost of living impact cost of living can be reduced or you know the average nigerian is much more productive and prosperous you know and then looking forward to a brighter and a more optimistic future the ability to pull that mechanism into the mainstream economy is where you begin to talk about public leadership i mean when you started the question you talked about Lee trust and rishi sunak and the likes these are institutional leaders who are probably in one way or the other seeking to deploy the mechanisms to unlock that potential of the low-hanging fruit, you know, to manage the impact and all that. So those, in, those, those um, um, shock absorbers really exist. But the leadership capacity to build the mechanism through which those shock absorbers will be, will be executed and deployed, you know, to, to deliver the assignment is a big question. Um, we are in the political tension um, season right now. And... Um, Q1 2023 is going to be largely around politics, uh, politics and the politics of elections. So what that technically means is that for Nigeria and the Nigerian economy is more around political correctness than what is economic priority to the average Nigerian. So whatever would help the government of the day retain power or whatever will help the opposition power, opposition party take over are the major lens through which economic policy will be delivered. And that's the political correctness bit of things. So for now, I mean, I do not think any major strategic approach will be will be taken towards unlocking you know the growth mechanisms required to help nigerians really rise above this challenge in as much as those those potentials really exist so it's quite unfortunate and and really really take into cognizance that the christmas season is around the corner and with the flood challenge we have right now or we're dealing with right now there will be a cost to increase some form of in inventory stock pricing by suppliers you know, and suppliers may intentionally hold back some product, knowing fully well that supply chains have been broken. You know, prices in pro prices of products and goods and services, prices of products and goods and services will increase in the market and will further increase down the line as suppliers also sort of like you know sort of gain control over the value chain to to to, to um, um, take products to market, knowing fully well that supply has been has been tampered with um, due to the flood situation. So, the promises are there. The potential is there, but you need a strategic leadership to unlock potential to, to results. I'm, I know that you're not a politician, but it, it's incredible how we say, oh, we have the low hanging fruit. So everything that we need to survive, we have it. It's just that we don't we need the brains and the people to do it. But then we have a government in place that asked us to you know, elect them because they knew what to do to help us get out of the rot uh, that we found ourselves in in 2015. But then we seem to have dug ourselves into a deeper rot as we speak. We have a central bank governor who's trying to change the notes. I'm wondering of what benefit that would be to the economy as we speak. Uh, there's also um, a, a drag and push and shove between Nigeria and the UAE because of co uh, we we're unable to repatriate certain funds in, you know, foreign currency. But then I go back again to the issue of oil. Uh, the only thing that brings us this foreign currency 
Nobody really seems to be paying attention to how much of it is being stolen. And every time, you know, attention is drawn to it, it's sensationalized. And then we move on to other matters. So again, if we have a government in place and they're not strong enough, there's no political will to deal with this issue. Are we really ever going to come out of where we are? And, and will the Naira ever be strengthened going forward? I don't think there's ever been any political will, to be very honest with you, Marianne. Um, you made mention of the fact that the government of the had plans in 2015. And I'm not, it's not just a current administration challenge. Over time, you know, our political economy hasn't been visionary enough and actually realistic again within the context of things, plus the willpower to deliver. When you say you're going to deliver 3 million jobs when you come into power, the argument should not be 3 million jobs or 1 million jobs. The argument should be how do you plan to do that? What's the mechanism through which you plan to deploy? Unfortunately, Nigerians are very carried away with emotional statements. Um, there is no form of intelligence advocacy to interrogate manifestos. Uh, you know, the city, they are not, they are not organized citizens approach or citizens organized ag agenda setting, you know, to, to engage politicians or those who are seeking, you know, to get into public offices. As a result, when these guys get in there, they just move around, show around, and in four years, the economy is worse off for it. However, it's also important to state that the non-oil sector has performed way better than the oil sector in recent times. Mm. The non-oil sector made up more than almost 1.1 trillion naira more in revenue than the oil sector for H1 2022. And the numbers are there. Anybody can go verify it, right? Mm. The non-oil sector is booming. But the problem is that the non-oil sector is met with a critical two blocks of challenges. It's, you have, number one, the fact that the markets are unorganized and informal, mm -hmm. all right? You cannot compete or you cannot, um, how will I put it, take a potential and unlock, unlock it for greatness when you are not organized and you're not some, in quote, some form of, you don't add some form of formality to the process. So we need to further organize, uh, organize and formalize the, 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 the non-oil sector. Take, for instance, now, Nigeria does not have a service industry policy, you know? Do we have data on how many web developers we have in Nigeria? Do we have data on how many web developers are, are engaging freelancing gigs and you know and working from Injora in Lagos and earning in dollars? We don't have all that data. Mm. All right. We don't even have data on the critical manpower or the productivity dynamics around the young people, you know, that has been, that delivers growth and the real engine room for us. That's to say, you know, in essence, because service the service economy contributes fifty seven percent in Nigerian GDP. There is a huge potential there. If the non oil sector is contributing more to revenue, it means that the Nigerian economy is already diversified and holds the potential for foreign exchange receipts through the non oil sector block. What we just need to do is to maximize, organize, and formalize that market for regional and global competitiveness. So I do not think that we'll be going anywhere further with this oil sector conversation. I do not think we'll be going further, anywhere further with the repatriation of funds. I also do not think that the Naira will gain any value. Recently, some, some folks talked about the Naira regaining value in the market. On the basis of what mechanism is what I would want to ask, mm. you know, the currency, any currency that yields any form of value over time, yields value on two grounds. Number one, there's a productivity ground, meaning that your economy is productive, not consumption driven. All right. You produce what you eat and then you produce it well enough that the chocolate you make in Nigeria can sell in Tesco in the UK, can sell in Zurich, Switzerland, and, and, you know, and it can scale foreign exchange in that order, which is not all. Secondly, there's a sufficient con condition around the institutional management that has to do with protecting that currency. And that's why you see that the Fed will do everything to protect the dollars. The, 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 the Fed will strike alliances with other major central banks in the world to protect the dollars. And then for developing countries like Nigeria, who do not have the necessary conditions of productivity and the sufficient conditions of, of conditions of proper institutional management begin to, you know, they are the, literally at the mercy of the policies made by these, you know, world, world institutions, as the case may be. So until we get down to the necessities, which is productivity, and the sufficient blocks, which are, you know, leading a coherent fiscal and monetary side uh, protection and management of the currency, the Naira cannot truly get back on its value. Finally, before I let you go, like you mentioned earlier, we're in campaign season. We're having town halls. We're having debates uh, here and there. And of course, the candidates are going to different places and asking for people to vote for them. What should be the um, front and center of the, you know, whatever these politicians have to offer us 
uh, in a manner of speaking, as opposed to the sloganarism that we see every other day, that hope is here, peace is here, blah, blah, blah. Um, and of course, we the people, what should we strategically be asking for going forward? The, the big ticket questions, you know, to so, for, sort of like interrogate politicians right now should be around the what, the how, and the why. Um, especially the how and the why, you know, especially the how, how and the why. Uh, a lot of times it bothers having me on, you know, evidently driving advocacy, evidently using evidence to, you know, to sort of like interrogate the manifesto process and the thinking behind that manifesto as it were, you know, also interrogating the capacity, the competence of people, you know, to be able to deliver that thing they've articulated, that mechanism they've shown to you on how they will create one million jobs in, 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 in one year. You know, we, we need to see it, we need to know it. This is where you expect a lot of non-governmental organizations who who say they stand in representation, they represent the citizens. You know, these folks need to lead more intelligently, engaging data and interrogating more intelligently. Then the citizens themselves in the little critical blocks that they, that, that they are in, Awareness is very important. Literacy is very important. And also, it's very difficult, but the concept of vote buying as well is also very critical. Teaching people that you need to vote and ensure that your votes are counted and, and all of that. But much more importantly, you know, uh, positioning young Nigerians in the mainstream of party administration, which is where the choices, sorry, which is where the options emerge, mm. you know, for the people, for the, for the critical mass to make <laughs> choices from. You know, you know what I'm trying to say? So, at the end of the day, it has to bother heavily on intelligent representation by both the masses and the people who represent the masses, you know, both at the social enterprise, business and NGO level. And, you know, and, and positioning to interrogate the what, the how and the why. It's very important. I think also that, to a very large extent, the political economy that we have in Nigeria today is largely extractive. You know, extractive institutions believe that they need to be in control of resources, you know, or economic um, access to, 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 to retain, to, to stay in power and all of that. And until Nigerians realize that there is need for them to begin to um, engage more intelligently to disrupt that extractive flow, there is no, there is no, there will be no future for inclusion in Nigeria. Yeah. And once there is no future for inclusion, there is no future for prosperity. Let's also be clear, even in developed economies, there are com people compromise at very high levels but not at the expense of the major, most important basic things that the citizens need to just get a life or to aspire for a brighter future. But right now in the context of Nigeria and even many other African nations, the ability to aspire or the hope to aspire has been hijacked by increasing cost pressure on the citizenry. And once you can keep the citizens you know, poor and expectant, then you can take advantage of them in every election year. That's the game. Mm. Well, uh, Gospel, always a pleasure to have these kinds of conversations with you because, you know, I live here a bit more enlightened on how the economy works. Thank you. Gospel Obele is the Chief Economist at uh, Streetnomics Limited. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for having me, Miriam. All right. We can only hope for the best from here on. Well, that's the show tonight. I hope that you all had a great time. We will be back tomorrow talking for development on the biggest stories in uh, on the Nigerian political scene. And sometimes we delve outside of Nigeria into Africa and, of course, the rest of the world. I am Mary Anako, and I'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Don't forget, you can watch Plus Politics again on our YouTube uh, pages, Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. And don't forget that we are also live streaming on Glow App and, of course, on um, Limex. Um, it's also an app, so you can watch us wherever you are in the world. Have a beautiful evening. Don't forget to get your PVC and make sure that you know that that PVC is your passport to a new Nigeria. Have a good evening.